Boss Babes and Bosses out there. So yeah, this is the first official video that I'm going to share with you since my last upload on July 2020. Because <laughs> um, I took a break for a month on my YouTube channel ko because I decided to just focus on the top three things last August 2020, which is my health and my the relaunching of my Boss Up PH company. And of course, making sure that my clients are well taken care of, especially their business during this pandemic. So this is the first video that I upload. Ko. And ito yung first na video na makikita niyo after nung nawala ako. The August is a well lit month because we hit 4,000 and 5,000 subscribers kahit I'm not so active. So thank you so much for your support. I'm so grateful for that. In this video, this is different compared sa my previous video natin. I'm going to answer a couple of questions from the Boss Up fam na nasa inside ng group ko. And I also got a couple of questions from the comments sa mga, sa mga videos na na-upload ko sa YouTube. I hope you will get value from this. And yeah, just keep on watching. So, here's the first question. My twin sister will read it and I will answer it. Ano pong dapat gawin kung na-overwhelmed ka na sa mga information, lalo kung aspiring freelancer ka pa lang? At paano mabilis matuto ng bagong skill? I've been doing this kind of job for 7 years na already. But still, I get overwhelmed every time I want to learn something new. Lalo na right now, I'm actively learning about marketing. And my tips lang na maibibigay ko sa mga aspiring is that first, if you want to learn something new, take it one day at a time. Like for example, yung big topic na gusto nyo, like let's say gusto nyo ng Instagram marketing. You want to learn about Instagram marketing. You create a subtopic around that. Like for example, for Instagram marketing, pwede mo siyang i-chunk down into first, how to optimize your Instagram profile. The second topic would be how to properly use hashtags. Third topic would be maybe how to create a graphic content for your Instagram account. So those three topics, wag niyo siyang ilagay lahat sa one day lang. Maybe one topic at a time, one topic at a day. Always take note important details sa mga natutunan niyo. You should have a place na always niyo yung ginagamit, always nyo madaling makita. For me, I prefer to really write it down, as in sulat talaga. Most of my friends also prefer to put it sa notepad, sa computer nila, or put it on Google Docs. Tinatype nila doon yung mga natutunan nila, and so on. So, that's my first tip. So, the second tip that I can get is that, enjoy the process of learning. For me, I enjoy it especially when I'm applying it na. The theory or yung lesson itself, hindi ko siya masyadong may enjoy. Pero once I get to apply it na in real world, in action, mas na-appreciate ko siya at mas nag enjoy ako. For example, ay, kunin natin yung example ko first. Like, the first topic is um, optimizing your Instagram account. So, on that day also, I apply it directly. Napansin ko, pag ina-apply ko siya right away, mas nagsistick siya sa mind ko at hindi ko siya madaling nakakalimutan. Yeah, that's the second tip that I can give to you is that you enjoy the process by applying it right away. The third tip would be share it to others. What you have learned, share it to others. Ako yung tipo na if meron akong bagong nalalaman or bagong Hmm, this is something new to me. I always share it to my mom or to my twin sister. Like, kahit wala silang pakialam, hindi naman talaga sila interesado sobra. Pero, the thought that I'm sharing it to them, parang mas nasistik siya sa mind ko. The more you share it to others, the more na mas magsistik siya sa mind mo and mas magigain ka ng clarity on the topic or the things that you are sharing to them. Yan yung na-observe ko na every time I share something to other people, mas na nare-retain siya sa mind ko compared sa hindi ko siya tinuro sa iba. My great example is that yung Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube. I love playing that one. Tapos, mas na-memorize ko yung steps if tinuturo ko sa iba kung paano din siya isolve. I think napunta na siya sa muscle memory ko. So, as long as nahahawakan ko yung Rubik's Cube ko, I can still get 
the right way and how to complete all the colors sa lahat ng mga sides. I guess that's the magic of sharing your knowledge to others. I know I don't know if you agree to that, but yan yung observation ko. And the second question is, how do you not lose focus in your work? What steps do you take in order to remain productive? Example, building a startup business or virtual assistance agency? These kind of questions are the questions that I really, really would like to talk about because isa din to sa mga struggles ko. I always lose track sa kailangan kong mga gawin at saka madali akong ma-out of focus. So, meron akong ginawa or meron akong ginagawa to keep me grounded or to keep me focused sa kailangan kong matapos on a daily basis. So, I have non-negotiable routines. So, yeah, I have a must routine every morning. Actually, kahit hindi siya morning ginagawa ko siya, like, example, 11 a.m. na ako nagising, I still do it kahit pa afternoon na. <laughs> so, this is a must-have routine ko every day. The first thing is, Right na right after na paggising ko, I always always pray. Yan talaga yon. No, may morning prayer ako na always ko um pray pray. That's the first thing na non-negotiable ko. The second one is that I listen to health and abundance affirmations. So while I'm cleaning the room, I will just let the health affirmation and abundance affirmation na magplay in the background instead of music and then the next thing also is i should identify the three major things that i need to work on that day when i say major things or major task on that day it means those are the things that can move the needle of my business for example working with the projects of your clients example touch basing with your current clients or maybe engaging with your prospective clients yung mga tasks na nakakapag generate ng money at nakaka help you to generate money or land a client yun yung mga major task so, I will identify at least three or four. After that, kung tapos na ako, tapos maaga pa, then I will call it rest na after. Basta tapos na yung tatlo, rest na talaga. Another three or four na naman na gagawin tomorrow. Huwag niyong ipasok lahat ng mga major task in one day. Tapos every day niyo siyang gagawin for a couple of days na ma-burn out lang kayo. So, the next one is to take a breather. Lately lang, since I feel like I really don't like working. <laughs> Lately, I feel like ayoko mag-work. Nakakawala ng gana. I always try as long as maganda yung weather. Lately, since summer, maganda yung weather dito. Ngayon na fall na, madalas gloomy na din. At saka while walking or while going for a jog i always listen to podcast or mga relaxing music yeah that's that's one of my technique kung feeling ko hindi ko na mag work pa or para nawawalan ako ng gana how to tell your client that you want to increase your rate for that question to be honest nahihirapan din ako na sagutin yan because i rarely ask for an increase nagaask lang ako ng increase if i acquire new skill that would help my client to upscale his or her business. Meaning, kung may nakuha akong skill na makakatulong sa client na mas lumago pa yung business niya. Pero kung wala, hindi ako nag ask ng increase. I rarely ask increase because sa longevity lang ng work ko. Siguro kung nag ask ako for longevity, I make sure na super dependent na si client sa akin. Yung parang hindi na siya mabubuhay. Char! <laughs> <laughs> parang ma mahihirapan siya na tanggalin ako because most of the business process ako yung may alam ako yung gumagawa nito so yan kung ma-feel ko na sa akin talaga nakarelay si client tapos super liit nung rate na binigay niya sa akin so magkakarriage ako na mag-ask ng raise for my rate I would say na hindi din ako mag I ask for increase kasi baka mas i-choose niya na mag-hire ng bago para pumalit sa akin na the same rate lang ng old rate ko compared sa i-increase niya. So, yung mga ganun. So, I will make sure muna before I would ask a raise if nakadepende na ba si client sa akin? Ano ba yung value na nabibigay ko sa business niya? Yes, nakadepende siya sa akin. Yes, most of his or her profits business niya because of my work. 
But yeah, that would be a good signal na pwede kang humingi ng, ng increase. And then, if yung skills mo ba na na-acquire, pwede bang magamit ni client to upscale his or her business, then yes, you can upsell that. If I'm asking, directly ko lang siyang sinasabi talaga, and directly ko lang pinipitch yung service ko na, Oy, uh, oy. <laughs> hey, I learned how to do this and I think this will help our business to grow even more bigger in the span of XXX times. Yung mga ganon. But I make sure that I deserve the, the increase or I, yeah, I deserve the increase or I deserve the raise. Is it necessary to have a contract in place before you start your work with your new client? Yes, I would really suggest na mag-provide ka ng contract niyo kung hindi siya mag-provide. Tapos, make sure na ipabasa mo talaga sa kanya yung whole contract and ask him or her kung meron ba siyang gustong i-revise doon. And then, make sure na napermahan niya. And you as well, vice versa, kung meron siyang papapermahan sa'yo or meron siyang ipapasign sa'yo, make sure na you read every details at naiintindihan mo lahat. Kung meron kang naiintindihan, ask someone, ask your friend na pwedeng magbasa or ask kung tama ba yung nakalagay, kung ano ba ibig sabihin nito before kayo mag-sign ng contract. And kung wala kayong contract, marami namang nasa-search sa internet. Pwede nyo i-customize yun based on your own terms and conditions. So, your question, is it really important ba talaga? Yes. Especially if outside Upwork kayo, that would be your safety net pag hindi kayo mabayaran ng client. Ilang oras nyo po natatapos yung isang content? Paano po kayo nakikipag-communicate sa client with regards sa design and content? So, ilang oras kung ginagawa ang content, it depends kasi sa content. May sometimes natatagalan ako sa graphics, especially if they are not providing the graphics that I needed. Yung mga raw pictures, sometimes ako na kasi yung pinapa-research nila, pinapakuha nila ng mga pictures for their business. So, doon ako natatagalan. And most of my graphics na ngayon, gin before ginagawa ko sa siya sa Photoshop, which is very time-consuming. But right now, I'm using Canva. You can click the link below. Meron akong link doon for you if you want to have your own Canva account. Canva is really a time saver when it comes to creating graphic content. So, you can use that. Also, natatagalan din ako sometimes sa copywriting, especially if the client is new. And then, uh, hindi ko pa masyado gamay yung tone of voice nila sa company. Ang ginagawa ko is, binabacktrack ko pa yung mga old old post nila and I make sure na the same yung terms na ginagamit namin, the same yung approach namin sa mga audience ng client. So, when it comes naman sa design, I just directly ask for their brand kit. Kung wala silang brand kit, I just ask for the color of their company, the font style that they are using, the logo, yung mga ganun na mga ano, na kailangan. Website na gusto nila promote And then, for the content ideas naman, it's easy to get content, especially if marami ng assets si client. For example, meron na siyang blog or vlog. You can repurpose that one. And typically, I'm just researching everything sa Google sa mga contents na related sa niche ng client. Most of the time talaga, ang ginagawa ko for my clients are the graphics and the copywriting, meaning yung caption. So, after I've done that, I will send it to my client and ask kung meron ba siya para revise, kung wala na, i-schedule ko na siya or direct ko na siya i-post. And wala talagang lalabas na content sa kanilang mga social media if hindi na-approve ni client. Kung may para revise siya, hindi, kung hindi pa niya na-check, na hindi ko talaga siya i-publish to avoid errors and baka may hindi siya gusto sa caption ko or may hindi siya gusto sa graphics ko. So, unless kung siya na yung nagsabi na suy, I, so far, I, I like your content, I like the copywriting, I like the graphics, so no need na to ask my permission, you just post it. So, kung hindi siya nagsasabi ng ganun, I always ask for approval first before ko siya i-publish. So, this is my last question that I'm going to answer. Hopefully, by this time, marami na kayong kukuhang idea or value from this video. And if yes, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button down below so that you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. Pwede po ba pa-elaborate yung sa onboarding clients na part? What are the things na dapat isubmit ni client? 
it depends kung ano yung role mo sa client, ano yung job responsibility mo, mo for the client. So, in this case, if you are asking for a social media manager, ikaw yung social media manager, ano ba yung dapat isend sa'yo ni client during the onboarding process, I would say first, the brand kit. And then the second one is the details of their target audience, maybe their ideal client or ideal customer. If they can provide you a customer avatar, that would be great. If they are also providing products and services, you also need to ask the list of the products and services, their pricing, um, the description, the photos, yung mga ganun, na pwedeng mong magamit for promotion. And then you can maybe also ask if you can use their rich content if my blog sila, if my vlog katulad nito, so that you can repurpose the rich content into a smaller, smaller content or micro content, yung tinatawag natin. Make sure to link the macro content sa micro content. So, yung mga micro content or repurpose content, ito lang yung mga bite size na mga content or mga bite size lang, yung mga clips clips lang talaga, hindi talaga yung whole content. Kinukuha lang siya sa macro. If you want me to talk more about how to create a repurposed content, then just comment down if you would like me to create that kind of topic. So, yeah, before I'm going to end this video, I would like to share the works of my boss babes and bosses inside my group. Check this out. So if you like to join our Facebook group, just research I'm ready to boss up by Brooksuik. But for now, we already hit 1,000 members. So magiging waiting muna kayo because I limit my group to 100, 1,000 members only. And from every month, magre-remove lang ako ng mga members na hindi talaga active and pinapapasok ko yung mga bago. So that will be my rules for my Facebook group. Just make sure lang na naka-follow kayo sa Instagram ko at Briksui and sa page natin sa, sa Facebook Bossed Up to make sure na updated pa rin kayo kahit hindi pa kayo napasok sa Facebook group natin. So, yeah. I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye! Hello! Hello! Hello, little baby! You want to be a vlogger? Huh? You want to be a vlogger? You want to always join Tita's vlog? Hmm? You want to always join Tita's blood, baby? <laughs>